And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you and uh, Rick in Polk County, Tech, Tennessee. Hey, Rick, thanks for watching Free Speech TV. What's on your mind? Uh, well, you made a reference to uh, Marley and Scrooge. Uh, we're all going to be like poor little Bob Cratchit if uh, the environmentalists keep on doing what they're doing and permitting us to use our own oil, our own natural resources, because uh, that's what's wrong with this country now. We're going bankrupt because we can't, we don't give ourselves our own energy that we have. We would, states would not be going bankrupt. C uh, counties, uh, municipalities, we would not be going bankrupt if gas would have never hit $4 a gallon. But yet we can't drill. We, you know, people chain themselves to bulldozers to keep from getting to the coal. You know, this is a dirty process. I mean, drilling for oil, sometimes dangerous, sometimes messy. Coal mining is dirty and dangerous. But yet, it's it's an essential part of life here in the USA. What's your response to that? Uh, my response to it is that what you're missing are what are called the externalities. The cost of using gasoline is four dollars a gallon, right? Right. It's not. Gasoline is ten or twelve dollars a gallon. The the thing is that you're paying the extra seven or eight dollars a gallon out of your taxes rather than at the pump. Because we're spending about three dollars a gallon on gasoline in the United States by having a military all over the world that's defending the the lines of supply. We're spending about two dollars a gallon on gasoline in Medicaid and Medicare health payments to people who got cancers and asthmas as a result of tailpipe emissions. We're spending about a dollar a gallon for gasoline, uh, or at least we were when it was leaded. It's, it's less now. From And you, the studies are really, really quite, quite conclusive about kids who live near major highways growing up with IQs that are 2, 3, 5, 10 points below the norm simply because they're inhaling fumes from cars, from auto exhaust. There are these, these things are called externalities. You've got Cancer Alley down in, in uh, Texas and Louisiana, this huge area where the probability of getting cancer is like not just twice or three times, but hundreds of times what it is for the average person because of these refineries. And none of that is paid for by the oil companies. None of that is paid for by the coal companies. You've got every single lake and river in the United States now, every single one, not one, not one separate from this. This changed just about about eight or ten years ago, every single river and lake in this country is so contaminated with mercury that there are warnings about the fish. That's a cost that the coal, and 100% of that came from burning coal. The coal companies, the, the coal barons, the guy who busted the union and allowed 30-some-odd 30, 30 people to die, what, Don Blankenship, he didn't pay a damn penny of that. Not a penny sir, of it. Sir, can I ask you a question? Do you, do you drive, did you go out and purchase the new Nissan Leaf? No, I don't. I don't drive. I don't own a car. I take public transportation. What does that public transportation go on? Uh, it's the subway. It's on electricity. I use okay. the metro here in D.C. Well, and I walk a lot. Well, you, you are an exception to the rule, sir. You're right. And we need, we need a lot more public transportation that's run by electricity. The thing is, you know, oil is, is only 2% of our electricity in this country is produced by oil. The reason why oil is strategic is because 98% of our transportation is based on it. And if we could move, and this is T. Boone Pickens' point, and I don't agree with his politics, but this is his point, and he's right. If we could move all of our trucks to biodiesel made from hemp or even natural gas and move all of our cars to electricity, we could break the back of Saudi Arabia.